It's been nothing but fog this morning, fellas. But we made it all the way around and down to the Ford at Hardwick Village. So we've got an interesting video for you today. We will be collecting a piece of equipment that's going to allow us to make some brewery tanks a little bit easier and a little bit cheaper than before because we're not going to have to outsource part of the process so stick around so I said we was going to go and get quite a bit of machinery and this is it look at the size of this fucking thing oh my god so they forked it on for us I don't know how we're going to get it off oh well the rollers come undone anyway that's handy to know looks like all the little bits and bobs are here there's probably some stuff missing I'm not sure but I'm not sure how we're going to get this off so I'm going to take it apart a little bit and we'll remove it piece by piece while we investigate all the components oh and if you don't know what it is it's ring rollers for bending steel so I think the way to get this off is remove all the side fairing panels remove these steel rolls because these on their own are gonna be a fair few kilograms a piece I imagine I guess we could actually also remove these and the top spindle as well could come out and then if all else fails we just disconnect the motor and we'll because it's chain driven and uh, it looks simply positioned we can just take the motor out and that will be 90% of the weight and the rest of it it's just 2b1 box section so that should be light as a feather so that's the weight that's the weight this is the weight and then I don't know what this is made out of but it sounds just like sheet metal so yeah it's hollow underneath so that shouldn't weigh too much either they've obviously had it pinned down and it forms part of the machine itself because it's got these feet on the base and this is designed for horizontal mounting so you can lay the whole thing on its back and you can use it as a table style sheet roller uh, steel roller rather than um, an upright as it is now so yeah I'm just gonna go around with an allen key very simply there are just four bolts just tapped directly into the steel by the looks of it and we'll be able to move these and these actually weigh about three or four kilos each so we're taking weight off the chassis all the time but without a doubt these bad boys are going to be where the weight is I'm just getting a good look at the assembly because putting it back together I want to make sure it goes back how it came apart she's a stripped but we got her off well, that's gone into grooves hasn't it so we would have got it on today um, but we'd have probably had to borrow a tool or two there or find somewhere that sold um, what was it Allen keys <laughs> the only thing I didn't think to put in to the toolbox so I'll bring this down here I'm gonna give it a good clean and then we're gonna start reassembling everything yeah there's the motor if you're interested two horses nay he said now that's just one bad joke yeah I'm really pleased actually how it's come apart so in the future if we need to do something like that again to move it or sell it we know what to do what a beast right and assembly is the reverse order of dismantling simple right we've got her in the workshop laid on the back and what I want to do before we start to reassemble the whole thing is I want to be able to move this around with the pallet truck without having it on a pallet now it's too heavy for wheels 
but we've got this big plate at the bottom. Fair enough, there are baffles in the centre, but that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole out with the plasma cutter for the uh, trolley to go underneath, the pallet truck to go underneath. So I've got eight holes to cut basically. So I've set the uh, Stell Inverter, Stell Inverter Pack 15. Stell Inverter Pack 15! And she's ready to cut through. Let's have a look. It's not seven mil for a start. It's about three mil. Uh, so let's say that's seven. And that's three and a half. It's about three and a half. That looks good. Let's reset. We'll blow the old uh, juice bag out, and I think we're ready to go. give you hellfire <laughs> wow see you later Jim that was quite the task and well, I wouldn't say they were the cleanest cuts I've ever done and that's not too warm to say it's just run a 16 amps through a 13 amp plug but Fair, oh that's gone straight down arm. Fair bit of dross. It's an actually it's an old tip. I didn't change the tip, which I should know better. I think it's definitely seen better days, hasn't it? To be fair. And uh, yeah, well, I've got the job done. What's up, my love? I'm gonna come up now, thank you. Yeah. So here she is. Look at this for a fit. It's like a glove. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So now that whole thing is mobile, just with. I don't know why they didn't think of that in the first place when they put that together. I didn't cut the back two out because 
well you don't need the trolley to go all the way through and it's got these mounts on the back if you want to mount it you can mount the whole roller press ring roller on its back if you want to roll really big diameter circles which makes sense because you wouldn't want that you need some sky hooks wouldn't you to hang it on and uh, it'd, be, it'd be really hard to manipulate right assembly let's get it put back together I'll see if I can take some vids as we go it's going to be a little bit tricky though because we do have to try and get that pump and gearbox on top of those bolts again without damaging the thread so by incrementally raising the motor on blocks and chocks and other things we're slowly but surely hutching it across onto our... now if Stuart was here, he's not, he's gone to work but if he was here we'd be able to lift this as a two-man wrangle not too bad but seeing as I'm on my Jackson Jones I have to come up with ingenious ways of doing it but while I'm here I thought for all of you motor enthusiasts it's a perfect time to take a look at the plate and that looks really interesting doesn't it 1.73 kilowatts of pure go juice in that bad boy let's get it mounted <laughs> so I wrangled wrongled and rattled this bad boy in all sorts of yeah ubiquitous positions and we've about we've about got got the old boy on well would you look at that just a bit of chain tensioning to do and I about reckon he's back in position what a diamond so just drop these few bolts until that chain takes up the slack and then that my friends is the motor back in position and that is the hardest part everything else I can do really easily one of the benefits of disassembly cleaning and reassembly particularly when you've got a brand new piece of equipment or well second hand is you find little things that have gone wrong and we've got these bolts out for this um, bearing retaining block which obviously rides up and down on this spindle and I noticed when we were taking it apart this bolt wasn't sat all the way in there was a bit of a one two mil clearance between the head of the bolt and the parent metal so on reassembly I inspected the bolt and I measured it with a bolt next to it and the bolt next to it was exactly the same size so I tried the bolt next to it this actually wasn't the bolt that was in here originally that one was so I put the one that was in originally in this hole and hey presto it's gone all the way home that tells me that when they drilled that particular hole there the blind hole wasn't deep enough therefore the bolt is bottoming out before it gets there so we're just going to pop a couple of wee washers on the tippy top of it and then we're going to send him home and this time two-handed operation I'm fully anticipating it to seat with that little bit of clearance and here we go as expected beautiful the two washers have just taken up that slack so now this bolt has four this block has four points of support instead of just three which whilst it might not be an issue today could be an issue at some point down the line and remember if you're tightening them up as Ave says keep going until you hear the crack and then back a quarter turn 
So I've got the control side back on and we've plugged her in. We've got lighty lighty on the power front, but we've got no movement. So I'm not worried, I think it's just going to be some quick fix. And the first thing I'm going to explore is shoddy stop on the top there. Basically where the rubber meets the road if you like and you've got some big sweaty bald fabricator uh, fiddling around and sticking his sticking his dingus in there and obviously he's just a big old grunt so finesse probably isn't his vocabulary we'll check this out first if this is uh, très bien as they say if it's good then we'll have a look down here at the relay circuits. I don't know if I've shown you in here. But eh, it's all relatively simple tackle. So just off the bat, I'm looking at, uh, I think we've got 24 volt panel um, controls. And I can't see what this is. It's got an on off switch on it, so that might be that might be 12 volt or 24 volt, probably 12 volt power supply for I don't know the foot control. Maybe you'd have thought that's going to be low voltage. We've got mains coming in down the bottom there. I'll check that that's going to the right place. And yeah, we've just got a couple of momentary switches here, so they should be latching something. So when I push that button. Dunker dunker, something here should be latching, and uh, these are just contactors for I'd imagine power in and then forward skis and reverse skis. What's this here? That's a 2k14, probably come off here. I don't know, doesn't really make much difference. Let's explore Ianos. Sure enough, as soon as I gave her a little bit of a, a little bit of a tickle on the old stem shaft there, uh, indeed, she fired up, and she's illuminated. And of course, what we all want to see is the forwards. Check it. The backwards. Looks what are you know? I could stand here and do this all day. Look at that. The power on those drive rollers. It is absolutely beautiful. Well, I'm guessing it'd probably be rude of me not to attempt to bend something. So I've had to reattach this cover because these side rollers here which keep the steel or whatever you're rolling in a vertical position and stop it from twisting they kind of go through that back finger protection cover it's just a cover and then you wind these in and out depending on the sh shape and twist of your actual bend so I'm winding this up now because I don't know exactly what I'm gonna to need to do with it or how it's gonna react when I put the piece of steel in so I've gone for a bit of angle let's fire the machine up and we're gonna go for a little bit of toe in action I think so I'm going to assume I need to wind this all the way up until that pretty much goes straight across that other roller there. Like so. 
there we go that's pretty much it okay let's just set it at that and uh, let's see what we get right way first then dickhead We've pushed it all the way to one end. Okay, the weight of the steel is holding it up. It looked like it was in good contact with the rollers. Maybe just a couple of turns on that one. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four full turns. And then we're going to see exactly what happens. We are bending. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. So it appears to have... put quite a curl on it can you see that so this is why we're playing with this so how would you get that curl back out I don't exactly know maybe we have to run it through the rollers in a different orientation what do you reckon boys and girls it's a bit tricky you wouldn't believe it. I tried to bend this leg in and it looked like a curly whirly. Watch this. Actually, taking the mickey a little bit here. Press wrong button then. I meant to zoom out, not zoom in. There we go. So this. Would you look at that? How's that for straight? I think that's a pretty good. But yeah, I was just about to say. Uh, where can I put this? It's like a horseshoe. I'm not too bad for the first time. I think that's alright. Anyway, bit of practice. I had to stop because I went and found a user manual for it. Of course it was in Turkish or something. But uh, angle iron, 50mm by 5. That's 50 by 3 minimum diameter 850mm and as you can see I have gone a little bit under that or about 600 so I was pushing it and what I didn't want to do was break it on the first day so that was an experiment I enjoyed playing with it we're never going to be rolling anything that small unless I'm doing some artwork or something daft like that. But that's it. Benchmark Pro 40. Freaking rollers. I've not had them two minutes. I've modified them. I've bent some steel. I've taken them apart. I've cleaned it. And I've reassembled it. Friggin' right, we did. Right, let's turn this off. Unplug it and go home. It's gone 8 o'clock and I'm exhausted. Well, there we go, boys and girls. As you can see from the colour of my hands, we mean business and we are definitely going to enjoy some fabrication in 2020 to 2023. I think. Breaking out cold. Right, I'm going home, ladies and gents. Well, thank you all very much and I'll see you on the friggin' next one.
What a day.